what's up guys how's everybody doing today i hope you guys are doing well uh it's still kind of crazy with this covid thing uh, and as you can tell we're not in the jeep right now we're actually going to pick up the brake caliper or brake calipers because they were so cheap i ended up deciding to just get both front ones because i don't need the other one to seize on me so i'm going to pick up both brake calipers right now so we can go throw them on the jeep and i don't feel like driving it until i put that on it'll make me feel a lot better about driving it and knowing that I'm not going to get stuck for that reason at least. So let's head over and get them. But I don't know if you guys can see this, if the camera's catching it, but it's April 15th today and it's still snowing. Like, I don't know, but yeah. And here we are, but we're not allowed to go inside because of this whole COVID thing. So I have to call this guy, pay by phone, and then he'll bring out my stuff. So let's check it once it gets here, I guess. Let's see if we got the right ones. And yeah, that looks like the right one. And the beautiful thing about this Jeep is, it's only the two sliders that hold it on. So you've got these two guys and the line. And that's it. It's pretty easy. It goes on and off real quick. Should have both of these done in less than an hour. And nothing left to do but go back and throw them on. So I'll see you guys at the Jeep. And I don't know how well the camera's picking this up right now, guys, but it is snowing. Like, it's actually legit snowing. So, I don't understand. April 15th, I'm ready to pull the motorcycle out. And this is the weather I'm getting? Come on. Well, at least we got the Jeep. So, first things first, guys. Gotta take off the wheel. But, safety first. You don't want to catch Corona. I usually don't wear these, but... So, while it's still on the ground... Crack all your nuts loose. And once they're all loose, get her up in the air, get the wheel off. Two bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom. There's no carrier on this. It's actually just the caliper itself. The carrier is actually built into the steering knuckle so all you got to do is break loose the 213 mils and before you actually get it off break your line loose because it'll be a lot harder to do it once you do get it off and don't take the line off just break it loose you can pinch it so that it doesn't leak i'm not pinching it today because I'm going to do a quick swap. I've done this many times, but you can pinch it if you do want it to stop leaking and you want to just avoid having a mess. So as you see, I got a few drops on the floor, close it back up. It's not leaking, but it's finger tight. So it's going to be easier for me to get off once there's no tension on the rotor and I'm holding it in my hand there. Once you get your sliders out, a quick pry from each side should get it loose. Sometimes you have to fight it a bit, but eventually they always give up. And my pads are in pretty decent shape actually. There's a lot of meat left on there, so we're going to keep these. And the rotor is still good too. There's just a little bit of surface rust on the edges, but the actual rotor has a lot of meat left on it too. So nothing to change because nothing's damaged. Just this guy from two videos ago, if you guys remember. If you don't remember, <laughs> go check that video out. But this one seized on me. And since they're 65 bucks, I figured why not change both sides so that doesn't happen on that side. So once you get your line out, quickly grab it and thread it in in the same position that it was in so that the little flat spot on the line catches the little flat spot on the caliper and it doesn't keep rotating. There we go. And I'll clean everything off with some brake cleaner really quick just so that I don't get any brake fluid on the pads. And if everything's clean, it's a lot easier to check for leaks once you're done. After you replace the line, Put your pins back in. I already got the top one in. And once you tighten everything down, here comes the fun part. Time to bleed the brakes. 
So luckily I have a second person to go inside and press the pedal for me. Uh, if you don't, there is a one person method, which I have not done, so I will not explain. <laughs> so if you guys want to see that, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. But today we're going to be doing the two person method. So in a second you'll see how that's done. Okay, so now everything is oh, nice and tight. I'm going to get my brother to pump the pedal and when he pumps the pedal I'm going to get him to hold it on the third pump. I'm going to open up the bleeder here and once I do that either air or fluid is going to come out and you keep repeating this process until nothing but fluid comes out. That way you know all the air is gone out of the piston and then you're ready to move on to the other side. Well you could do both sides at the same time but I don't feel like lifting both sides up at the same time so today we're doing one side at a time guys. So let's go. Keep pumping, keep pumping. Hold it. All right, pump again. Hold it on the last one. All right, keep going. We're getting somewhere. I got some fluid out. Feels good? All righty. Then that side is all finished. Now I get to slap the wheel back on and we're going to rinse and repeat and do the other side. So same thing, get your wheel off. Make yourself comfortable. And just like last time, crack your line open just so that you'll be able to get it off after. Just in case it leaks. Try it out again. Get your pads out. And one thing I didn't mention while I was doing the other side, guys. Copper washer. Don't forget your copper washer. So seat your copper washer in there. It does come with a new bolt for the fluid to pass through. Attach your line. And as you can see, minimal mess. So you don't really have to worry about pinching the line on this one here. Tighten it more once you actually have the two sliders in so it's held in place. And same thing, replace your pads. And I love how easy these guys go on when they're brand new because the piston is already seated as far back as it can be and you don't really have to worry about anything except pushing the sliders back because they will get in your way. But as you can see, tons of room to get around there. Don't forget to check your line. And time to bleed. Hold it. Huh. Keep going. You actually heard that air come out, eh? <laughs> Hold it. Okay, a little bit of fluid. Keep going. Pump it. I think we're good. I'll let go. Yeah, you can let go. Pump it a few times for me. No, you don't need to. All right. How's it feel? Pretty good. Okay, hold it one last time. Sub. 
Make sure you tighten up your bleeder, guys. And the right torque spec on that is just tight enough, so don't go over that. I'm sure, if you want to find the actual torque spec, it's out there. And that's it. Put the wheel back on and call it a day. And now that we got all the wheels back on, it's a good idea to check brake fluid. And it looks like we need a little more. And we are full. So I ended up bringing it outside last night and leaving it out here. So let's hop underneath really quick. And nice and dry. Now let's check the other side, and if it's dry, then let's go test drive it. Yep, nothing there. So, good to go. Alright, so we'll let it warm up. I've got my brake fluid in the cup holder just in case anything goes down and we need to add some. I have all my tools in the trunk. And the two old brake calipers are in the box. And I guess since we're going for a drive, we'll go return them and get the core back. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, whenever you buy parts that are substantially rebuildable, so like you can actually take them apart and put them back together like new, such as brake calipers, they take them back from you and give you a deposit sort of so that they can rebuild them and you just get your money back. So it's a little bit cheaper on your part and they can sell the rebuilt ones after. So. Yeah, just gonna go return these real quick and we'll be out of here. And hopefully we can find the somewhat empty street or empty space, because I know a lot of businesses and schools are closed, so I can't really just go into an empty parking lot. But uh, we can see if we can find somewhere to do some heavy, heavy braking or heavy testing or whatever you want to call it. Just uh, see if the brakes lock up and just, yeah, see how well they work because you don't need them to fail on you when you need them. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So I think it's warmed up now. Let's go. All right, just a cul-de-sac over here. So let's see how good these brakes are. Drop it in neutral and foot to the floor. I think they grip. I think they grip hella good. <laughs> And yeah, that's because I don't have ABS, guys. But you don't need ABS. If you know what you're doing, just pump the brakes in sticky situations and don't lock them up. But most of the time, you should be all right without ABS. These old vehicles didn't come with it, so I'm not too worried. And we're just about here now at the parts place. So let's go call this guy to pick up the two calipers from me because I'm not allowed to go in again and we'll go see if maybe we can do another little bit of testing somewhere and since we're gonna wait for this guy to pick up the two calipers might as well hop out and check for leaks and we're still dry let's check the other side and still dry At least we did that right <laughs> and for anybody wondering i did change out the screws with the copper washers so the actual actual screw going through the line into the caliper is the new screws that come with the calipers because yeah some people don't change those and that's how you get leaks got my core charge back let's get out of here and for anyone else that drives a tj let me know what your oil pressure is usually at because I don't know if mine is sitting a little high or if that's where it should be, but it always sits just above the middle. But honestly, so far so good guys. The pedal feels solid. It drives good. It's not uh, spongy because if you guys don't bleed it right, then you'll have a spongy pedal. So if that's what's happening, then you know. But no, everything feels good. The pedal's tight. It's driving great. And I'm actually really happy. So. 
Let me see if maybe we can find another spot to test it, but if not, then we're good. Back home now, and fortunately, I could not find anywhere else to test it, but we can check the brake fluid real quick, and everything looks nice and full. Still pretty clean in here. It's actually really clean in here. It's nice. And I think that's going to be a successful day. So thank you for watching guys. Thank you for sticking around this long. And if you did stick around this long, then I'm going to let you guys know that we are going off-roading again this Sunday. And there's a good one coming for you. So if you enjoyed the last off-roading video, then watch out for the next one because there's going to be a lot more people on this run. And like I said, thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Don't forget to leave me a comment and a like. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the craziness that's coming up next because it's a whole lot more planned for this Jeep. <laughs> so until next time, guys, take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Peace.